Hey there, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Chris Holman of Nine Line Ministries. Today's daily devotional, I tell you, the video won't be as polished. There won't be any editing. And as you can see, there was no intro. There won't be an outro on this. Um, I'm just going to record it and then direct upload. So this is the daily devotional for Monday. Um, and, of course, now tomorrow's daily devotional will be of much better quality. Uh, as far as, you know, how polished it is. So just bear with me. So today's daily devotional, Building with God. We will be reading out of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3, and as well as Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 25 through 27. So let me read Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. First, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The uh, New Living Translation reads, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. That's how the New Living Translation translation uh, translates uh, this text. In the King James Version, again, I will read it. Uh, Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Well, let's read what the devotional says. You may be involved in a complex project with many unsettled issues that you don't know how to resolve or its chance, chances of succeeding might be slim, but have you committed the project to God? That's the way to gain peace and clarity. If you commit what you're involved in to God, he will see to it that your plans succeed. The Bible instructs, commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him and he will help you. Psalms 37, 5, the NLT. He'll help you, that is, if the project is his will. The Bible also warns, except the Lord build the house, thy labor in vain that build it or they labor in vain that build it. Psalms 127, 1, King James Version. Too many men try to accomplish something but haven't checked it out with God first, so their labor is potentially in vain. Whether they're building a house or whatever they're trying to accomplish, it won't succeed or it won't last. Before you embark on a project, lay it before God and be sure to get His blessing and authorization before you sink time and energy into it. You know, this brings to mind something that I've spoken about many times, is seeking God's will in your life, not your own. And when you seek God's will, God, you know, reveal unto me your will, what path I should take. Then that path that you take will be blessed by God. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Accept the Lord. Build the house. Thy labor, they labor in vain that build it. Building with God. We as Christians should commit everything that we do to God. We should seek Him in prayer and seek His will, not our own, in our lives. Not our own will. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. So now my Bible says in... For chapter 16, verse 3, it says, See established. See notes for 4, 25 through 27. So let's turn to that. Let's first read Proverbs chapter 4, 
verse 25, 26, and 27. And we will read what the Bible, what my Bible, the, the study Bible has to say in regards to this. Verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Remember what we just read, what we just talked about. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. I've said this. I've said this. You know I've said this. You've heard me say this. Let God guide you. Everything you do in life should be an act of love, and that love should be a lifestyle. Remove thy foot from evil. Look to the Lord's prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right? Remove thy foot from evil. That was verse 27. So we look down for the notes for those three specific verses. It says, undivided attention to the right path and a determination not to even sample evil. Assure that one's ways are established. To be established is to be ordained by God, to be led by God, for God to, to, to bless what you are doing, that one's ways are established, the passive voice implies that it is God who does, established, is fixed and firm, secure, not subject to change or to destruction, right or left, expresses the whole range of evil paths, that is not to say that a middle road, a compromise, is the good way, but that it is important not to leave the only good way. The path to heaven is straight and narrow, and it is easy to be led astray off that path. Also, even as a Christian seeking after God and His righteousness, it is easy for us to confuse what we want to do for our lives with what God wants us to do. I said this over a year ago. God had revealed something to me and it wasn't what I wanted to do or what I wanted to hear. And I said and I said in this video, you'll find find this video. I don't remember what the video was called. Uh, I apologize. But anyway, if you've seen it, if God speaks to you, whether in dreams or speaks to your heart, and it's always what you want. It's probably not God. If God seems to tell you everything that you want to know and everything that you want to hear and, and is telling you, uh, you know, everything that, that you want, it's probably not God. Because God's will is not always our will. And what is best for us isn't always what we want for ourselves. God has a plan for each and every one of us. He has a plan for our lives. I've talked about this before. There's the, the difference between destiny and fate. And, and, and fate is no free will. Fate is, no matter what decision you make, you are fated to reach whatever that destination is. That is not our reality. Destiny is you have a destiny to do something. You can either choose to embrace that destiny, pursue it and fulfill it, or reject it and go your own way. Now, God's will is like destiny. The difference between destiny and God's will is, with God's will... That destiny, if you will, is ordained by God. It is what God has planned for you. You can embrace that. You can embrace God's will for your life, pursue it and fulfill it, or you can reject it and go your own way. I had done that 
many, many years. I had mentioned recently how I had been called by God to the ministry all the way back when I was a boy and I rejected it and I went my own way for 40 years. For 40 years. Well, my whole life. Just before my 40th birthday, God spoke to me. See, I had said that if God means for me, for me to be a minister, he'll tell me until then I'm just going to do what I do. September 8th, 2018, that's exactly what happened. I heard the resounding voice of God, and he called me to ministry. There was so much more that God had revealed to me that day. But that there. God had spoke to me through others time and time again, but to me that wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. I had to hear it from him. And God was persistent my entire life. And when the time had come, when I began to seek after his will and not my own, it was then, as I had been following God and God had been leading me down that path towards this, was when God spoke to me. Audibly. Not just spoke to my heart. Not just spoke to me in a dream. Not just that still small voice in my subconscious. No, I heard the resounding voice of God. I'm telling you, don't be stubborn like I was. All those years I could have been doing God's work. Because of my stubbornness, I did not. What it is in your life that you have plans, your plans that you have for your family, for your home, whatever, your career, whatever it may be, if it is God's will, he will bless it. If it is God's will, he will guide you through it. And to know if it's God's will is to pray Seek him in prayer every day, multiple times throughout the day. Pray that he reveal his will to you. Before you act, seek God. Let him show you the way. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in the way that you must go. If you start going down a wrong path, I tell you, you'll find out. You will find out. If you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, when you start going down a wrong path, you'll know. Stop. Stop and just seek Him in prayer. Because I tell you, if it's not God's will, if it's not God's will, there will be clear, clear evidence undeniable evidence you'll feel it in your spirit and it will not be blessed by God I'm going to talk a little bit further here I had a conversation really on this very same subject several months ago with a retired pastor and I explained to him how, how I was raised with Calvinism. I had converted to Catholicism as an adult and I had left Catholicism. And now, in a way, I'm back to what I was raised, just not a Calvinist. Free will. And then I explained to him my experience, how God had spoke to me and called me to ministry. And he said, and, and you've come full circle back to Calvinism. And I said, no, no, I haven't. That God's will in our life is not God ordaining, uh, causing things to happen in our lives. It's different. And I explained what I had just previously, just now, a moment ago, explained the difference between destiny and fate. And that God's will can be embraced and pursued and fulfilled or rejected. That I still have the free will. If still, after hearing the voice of God, I said, you know, 
I've heard your voice, God. Lord, I've heard, but I'm not going to do this. That's not a path I want to go down. I was responsible for men in Afghanistan. I don't want to be responsible for the souls of a congregation. Because I tell you, after that the last deployment, I did not ever want to be responsible for another human being again. I could have gone down that path. I could have. But I had learned to be obedient to God. And I realized all that I had been through, all the stubbornness of my life, my rejection of how what God had revealed through others time and time again since I was a little boy, even when I was not a Christian. I had rejected it. And here, what I specifically had, had said, if God calls me to ministry, he'll tell me. That morning, he did. I have no choice. It is God's will for my life. I can choose to reject it. I can choose to reject it. Because I love God. Because I have dedicated my life to serve Him. To follow Him. To let Him guide me. I had prayed time and time again, Lord, use me as your instrument. Well, He did. And so here I am. So this retired pastor is a very dear friend of mine, an older gentleman. Um, I have received such immense wisdom from him and from his experience in the ministry, decades in the ministry, nearly, he was in the ministry nearly as long, if not longer than I'm actually alive. I believe longer than I've been alive. He's been in the ministry. I explained to him what I was talking about, what I meant, and he he agreed. He agreed then. There, I guess, had been a bit of a mis initial misunderstanding, but he said, yeah, you're right. When you hear the resounding voice of God, you have no choice. No real choice if you're a Christian. No real choice if you're a Christian, but to, to follow that voice. Building with God. So what this devotional is telling us is that if it is God's will that our endeavor will be blessed, that we need to commit what we're involved in to God, He will see to it that they succeed if it is his will for that path for you, it will succeed. God's not going to call you to ministry if it's going to fail. God is not going to guide you in a specific path in your life for it to fail. It will be blessed by God. Divine providence will rule in your life. It's an amazing thing. I want you to envision a river. The flow of that river is God's will. Now, I live in the Ohio River Valley, so I clearly understand this. The Ohio River Valley, which runs down it. Uh, down around where Indiana and Illinois and Kentucky there in the tri-state. It's about two hours from here. Uh, the Wabash River runs into the Ohio. And further down, it runs into the Mississippi. There's a, a specific flow of that river. That is the direction in which it goes. That is God's will. Going with the current of the river is so much easier than going against that current. You can go against that current if you like. You can cross the river through the current if you like. 
But there is no path easier down a river than with the current. Not only is it easier, it is the fastest in which you can travel a river downstream with the flow, with the current. That's God's will in our lives. Let God guide you. Follow him down that current. I say this so many times that I think today this devotional is going to get this through better than I ever could in the past. Seek his will in your life. Before you start any endeavor, seek him in prayer. You want it to succeed. You want it to be blessed by God. Seek his will to ensure that it is his will for you to go that way. Is there a house you want to buy? Seek God in prayer. Seek him in prayer. Let him reveal his will for your life. Is there a career path you want to go down or an educational path you want to go down? Seek God in prayer. Let him reveal it to you. If that is his will for you. You meet a nice gal. She seems wonderful. You're, um, let's say you're unmarried. You're like me, right? I'm using this as an example because it relates to me, but. You're, you're a single guy and you meet a, a, a Christian woman and everything seems great. Before you get serious, maybe even before you even really start talking to this woman, seek God in prayer, see if it is His will. I can assure you that I have, in the last six months, made this mistake. I misunderstood some things to be God revealing his will and I went down a path that was I thought was God's will for me that this was the person God had intended but it was not it was not I sought God in prayer but I just I pursued further before waiting on God and I made a mistake in that. And, well, it became apparent to me that I had gone the way that I wanted to go, not the way that God wanted me to go. So seek God in prayer. Seek His will in your life. And where He leads you, He will bless you your plans will succeed when it is established, when it is ordained, when it is blessed, and when, when it is the will of God. Always trust in Him, His will, not your own, and trust in His perfect timing, not yours. And then from and I add from a previous devotional rejoice rejoice in the relying on him. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I submit all my plans to you. Please have your perfect way with them. Help them to succeed only if they are your will. Heavenly Father, keep us and bless us and guide us in everything that we do. Reveal your will to us in our lives. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy and your saving power. We praise you because you are God. In, in the heavenly name, in your heavenly name, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
May you walk with God each and every day. May he guide and protect you. May he reveal his will to you in your life. May you always choose him and put him first, first in your life. Our God is a God of love. God bless.